All right, welcome back to part two of my 3D printed intake I am making for my Nissan 350Z. As you can see, there has been quite a few changes since where we left off. Um, obviously, I've got the velocity stack sorted out, mass airflow sensor, a 90 degree fitting for the breather tube for the valve cover. And I've also gone ahead and added a bead to the end just for extra layer of security to make sure uh, nothing comes undone, all stays in place. So down here for the breather tube, I created an additional uh, little landing to add a little bit extra reinforcement. And then uh, this actual 90 degree fitting, which is going to be a separate printed part. So I can actually rotate that, clock it into whatever position I need. And then uh, once I'm happy with the location of it, I can use acetone or super glue or something like that, kind of lock it in place. All right, so now we can see the inside of the tube for the breather port. And then again, that is going to be a separate piece. All right, then we got the mass airflow sensor. I've actually verified this flange before. It's the same as my Frontier, so I got lucky on that. Uh, it will be a separate 3D printed part just because the overhangs and stuff, it makes it fairly difficult to print in place. So I can go ahead and hide that. Then I went ahead and kind of created this recess pocket uh, to kind of border everything, gives it a nice mating surface so I can kind of glue it in place. It's going to seal well and everything is properly located. And then we got the velocity stack, which again is made for a six inch filter I had laying around. Has a nice round over. Uh, I think it'll work pretty good. It's very, very similar in dimension to the Jim Wolf Tech pop charger. If you've ever seen that, it's the same kind of idea. Um, I have a nice round, big radius going into it. And uh, I think it should make it sound pretty cool, hopefully. Uh, then lastly, I've split up the intake tube into three different positions. I basically used that same uh, construct, plain along path, uh, and then moved along until I found a happy spot where I think, you know, I can fit this entire width or entire length on my 3D printer. Um, if you have a really big printer, I guess you could probably, you know, just split it in half. Uh, or maybe even one single piece, but you run the risk of it being knocked over and failing. So I, I figured I would, you know, reduce that likelihood. So I split it up in three points, and just to make sure I had everything kind of lined up when I go to glue it all together, I've created these little registration marks. All right, so all I did for these is basically once I had it divided um, into the separate pieces, I created a sketch on these faces, and then just drew a little circle and then extruded it both directions, uh, went ahead and basically created a chamfer on the two edges just so there's not an overhang, it'll be easier to 3D print because um, obviously one side is going to be up in the air, the other one's going to be down on the build surface. Um, round it over, just to make it a little bit easier to print and then we are all done, I think. So I'm gonna get these exported and then send them over to the slicer and get them printed. All right, now over into Bamboo Studio. You can see I've actually been able to fit all three tube portions into a single print. I'm pretty happy with my presets that I have on here. I'm gonna be printing everything at a 0.16 layer height. And then um, I actually am doing a three wall loop. I originally said I was going to do two. I actually ended up doing three. So the walls are a little bit thicker just because this is a 3D printed part. I wanna make sure there's a, enough integrity that's going to hold up. Um, I may, however, go back and print another one in the future that I can use for a carbon fiber mold. So, and then of course I have supports on, so we can go ahead and slice it, see what it looks like, and then get it off to the printer and get it made. Seven hours later, we have all the tubes finished out. They look really good. I haven't cleaned them up, removed the supports yet, but they all look pretty nice. And I'm really happy with the quality. Um, you can see this faceting here. That is not due to the printer. That's not the printer's fault. It's actually how I sliced it, or I should say how the model I imported is at fault because I exported it as an STL and uh, not super fine 
resolution. So if I would have done a final resolution, it would have been a lot smoother. Or if I exported it as a step file, um, just Bamboo Labs, Bamboo Studio actually accepts dot step files. Same thing on this one. You can see the kind of pattern there. But overall, it looks yes. really, really good. And you get them cleaned up and then glued together and test fit in the engine bay. But I actually printed this very first. Um, the top side's not super smooth. The radius looks really good. I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up, sand it a little bit, maybe hit it with a little clear coat just to kind of smooth things out. But we can go ahead and test fit it on the filter and do that perfect. Go ahead and tighten that down and really, really happy with that fitment. Cool. All right, so everything is printed and ready. Um, I, I've gone ahead and taped the whole tube together. I used these little registration marks there and there to get things lined up and then just use masking tape. Um, I have the 90 degree fitting. It just sits in here like this. And try to do it with one hand, as always. There it is. Um, and again, it's clockable, so I can rotate it in any direction. And then the mass airflow sensor didn't come out super pretty. It's kind of ugly on that side, um, but it will work. And that's why I add that little extra material there to help everything seal. And that's in place. It's pretty snug. It'll stay on its own, but of course I'm going to use acetone to dissolve some ABS and basically use that to bond the parts together. And here is the factory mass airflow sensor and nice, oh, backwards. There it is. All right, cut to a few hours later. I've let everything cure and I got too impatient. I threw it on the car before I actually decided to start filming. Um, here it is, it, it totally works. The wall thickness, again, is really, really thin. This is something I plan on just using as a mock-up test piece, something I'm going to make a mold out of. So I wouldn't recommend running a intake with only three perimeter walls. Uh, it's holded shape pretty good, a um, few notes of changes I need to do. The mass airflow sensor needs to be rotated, just clocked up a little bit to allow for more clearance. Um, I need to figure out a way to actually support it. Um, it flops around a little bit, not too big of a deal. As you can see, I do not have clamps on the coupler right now. So it is loose, but it is very, very snug. And I think it's okay to start the car. I'm really curious if this is going to work and run and uh, how it's gonna sound. So let's give it a whirl and Fingers crossed. All right, everything seems to be good so far. Starts to run, it seems to be idling okay, and uh, it's a good sign. I'll let it warm up a little bit, and I'll take it around the block and see if it actually drives okay, and then see if it there's any noise difference. Seems to be good so far, no check engine light. That's a good start. Can, you can totally hear it. That's pretty hilarious. It definitely has a little bit of induction noise. Obviously, I don't want to go fast in the neighborhood. I don't. I don't think I broke 22 miles an hour, so I'm okay. But 
So there's definitely a vacuum leak somewhere. Uh, it did work right. It was not super happy revving it, but you could definitely hear the induction noise, which is really cool. Kind of what I'm going for. And most importantly, I'm just using this to test fit just to see uh, and kind of show you guys as an example that it is possible, maybe not recommended. You're really doing this at your own risk. I would not recommend trying to run a 3D printed intake. Hopefully this inspires you to go out and design, make and 3D print your own parts. If it doesn't, um, let's go ahead and hit that like button anyways. Again, if you have any ideas, let me know down in the comments. Uh, I'm all ears. I love to design, tinker, and just make things, whether they're practical or not. I have some more projects in the works for this. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen those cutouts here uh, that duck the air into the intake. I'm going to be making one of those. I also have a few replacement parts in the works for my buddy's 1985 Ferrari Mondial. It's a really cool car. A lot of the plastic parts are getting pretty old and brittle. He's had a few that have broken, so we're gonna try and make some replacement parts, kind of keep them as factory as possible. Um, we might make some aftermarket cell stuff too as well. And then he also has a Project Riviera that we're gonna be designing some parts for as well. So stay tuned for those. Uh, make sure to hit like, subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one.